Welcome back to Lecture Highlights, where we try to explain the most important key concept in economics as quickly, simply and intuitively as we possibly can. In the last Lecture Highlight of this series, we introduced the cost-benefit analysis model and we tried to explain how we can use this model to evaluate our decision of whether or not we should buy a particular product. So the product could be a brand new car or a coffee and we simply make our decision by calculating the benefits and the costs and only buying that product if the benefit exceeds the cost. But cost-benefit analysis can be used to explain our decision to do any activity at all, not just whether or not we should buy a product. So that could be our decision to go for a walk or simply our decision to just stay at home and watch TV. But in these cases, we don't really have a market price for watching TV or going for a walk, which we would use as a foundation when we're calculating the cost of doing that activity. And we're also not buying a product when we go for a walk. So how do we calculate our willingness to pay, which we use to calculate the benefit of the activity? Well, in this lecture highlight video, we're going to look at how we overcome these challenges. And along the way, what we'll try and see is how we can measure absolutely anything using money. So let's think of an example of a really simple activity that you might have to decide whether or not you want to do it to see how we can apply cost benefit analysis to explain and understand our decision making process. So imagine for a second that you're sat at home, you've just put your favourite film on Netflix and you're really, really comfy on the sofa and you don't want to move. So you've got your drinks, you've got your snacks, you've got everything that you might need to really enjoy the film and you just don't want to have to move because you'll never get as comfy as you are now. But then five minutes into the film, you realise that the volume isn't quite loud enough for you to really enjoy the film. And you notice that the remote control to turn up the volume is over on the other side of the room. So you're faced with the decision of whether or not you want to get up to get the remote and turn up the volume, or instead just accept the volume's a little bit quiet, but you don't have to get up and move. So what we need to do then is to compare the costs and the benefits of the activity of getting up off the sofa, grabbing the remote control in order to turn up the volume. But how do we measure the benefit of being able to enjoy the film that little bit more because the volume's louder? And how do we measure the cost of your effort in terms of getting up off the sofa to go and grab that remote control and come back and sit down? Well, what we need to understand then is how we can measure both the benefits and the costs in this example using money. So the first step is to look at how do we calculate the benefits of having the volume on the TV turned up. Or a different way of saying this is how much do we value the volume being turned up on the TV? Or as an economist more formally, what we like to say is how much are we willing to pay in order to have the volume on my TV turned up so I can really enjoy the film. But we're not talking about the idea of buying a product. So what does willingness to pay mean in terms of increasing the volume on my TV? Well, the way to think about this is imagine that you're watching the film with a friend and you say to your friend, hey, would you be able to go and grab the remote control and turn up the volume on the TV? And your friend says to you, well, I'm willing to do it, but are you willing to pay me 10 pence if I do? And you think to yourself, well, I've got to sit here for the next hour and a half. I really want to enjoy the film. So yeah, I'm willing to pay you 10 pence. But instead of getting up and actually turning up the volume, he comes back to you and says, well, would you have paid 20 pence in order to have the volume turned up by me? And you think, well, 20 pence, okay, it's not very much. I'm willing to pay that. Therefore, I get to enjoy the film that little bit more. And this keeps going on and on and on until you say you're not willing to pay the price that he's asking. So imagine you get all the way up to four pounds and you're now thinking, well, four pounds is really expensive but I really do want that volume turned up. I value it quite a lot. So I'm willing to pay you four pounds if you turn the volume up for me. And then he comes back to you and says, well, what if I charge you four pounds 10? And you think, do you know what? After four pounds, it's really not worth it to me. I'd rather just accept that the film is played at a slightly lower volume than pay anything more than four pounds. So what that four pounds represents then is your willingness to pay this other person 
to turn up the volume so that you can enjoy the film that little bit more. So really what this is measuring is your total benefit of having the volume turned up by somebody else. So now we've been able to calculate what the benefit of the activity is, i.e. turning up the volume, and it's equal to four pounds. So the next step is how do we calculate the costs in order to compare the two? So now let's see how can we calculate the cost of getting up off the sofa to actually turn up the volume on the remote control. So now imagine that instead of the idea that you're paying your friend to actually go over and turn up the volume, your friend who sat next to you says, hey, I'd really like it if you go over to the remote control and then come back again, but while you're there, you're not allowed to turn up the volume. So this might seem a little bit strange, but essentially what this situation is capturing is your effort cost and your disliking for getting up off the sofa with none of the benefits that you gain from increasing the volume. So if your friend just asked you to do this, you'd probably say no, because you don't want to get up if there's no reason to do so. But then imagine he says to you, would you be willing to do it if I pay you 20p? And you think, well, in that case, maybe I might be a little bit more inclined, but it's still not worth it to me because I've got to get comfy again and I've got to exert the effort to go over and go towards that remote control and then come back and sit down again. So if you say no, he says, well, what about 30p? And you think, well, it's really not worth it again because I really just want to stay comfy. So he goes to 40p and 50p and 60p and he keeps going all the way up until the point at which you say, actually, go on, I'm willing to do that. So imagine the price you get to is a pound and then you say, do you know what? I'm willing to get up off the sofa, go over to the remote control, leave it alone and then just come and sit back down again. So what that one pound is actually capturing then is your total cost of your effort and the total cost to you of going over to the remote control and then coming and sitting back down again. So what we've been able to do in this really simple example is calculate the benefits of having the volume turned up, which is equal to four pounds. And now we've also calculated the cost of your effort of going over to the remote control and actually bringing it back and getting comfy again on the sofa, which is equal to one pound. So we can see straight away that the benefit is equal to four pounds, the cost is equal to one pound, so we definitely should decide to get up off the sofa and go and turn up the volume. So that's how we can apply cost-benefit analysis to understand these kinds of decisions for any activity whatsoever. Now you might be thinking that this whole decision process seems overly complicated and isn't very realistic. The idea that we're sat on the sofa and to decide whether we should turn up the volume, we're going to imagine paying our friend to do it. And then we're going to imagine that our friend's paying us to do something else and then calculate these costs and these benefits. So it can seem a little bit abstract. But the main idea though, is that we're not suggesting that we perform these calculations explicitly. Again, what we're saying is we tend to behave in a way as if we perform these calculations in our head without even realizing and we behave in a way as if we are comparing the benefits and the costs in this way. So to give you an example of how we can apply this to understand decision making, the last example we looked at was the idea that you've just got comfy after you've put the film on and you've got an hour and a half left of the film and we said that the benefit of increasing the volume is four pounds, the cost is one pound, so therefore you should definitely get off the sofa to change the volume. Now imagine instead that most of the film is gone. There's only five minutes left of the film and just towards the end, you're starting to realize, actually, I'd rather the volume was that little bit louder. So now let's imagine that we want to turn up the volume, but again, we'd have to go over to get the remote control if we want to do this. But because there's only five minutes left, it really affects our benefits and our costs. So whereas before, we were willing to pay someone four pounds to turn up that volume to enjoy the entire film. Now, if there's only five minutes left, let's do our willingness to pay auction again. So if they said to you, are you willing to pay 10 pence? You might think, well, 10p, I'm willing to pay that. What about 20p? What about 30p? And you get to 30p and you think, do you know what? There's only two minutes left. I'd only be willing to pay 30 pence. 
If you go to 40 pence now, I'd just say it's not worth it to me because there's only two minutes left of the film. So the benefit of having the volume turned up when there's only five minutes left has dropped from four pounds right the way down to 30 pence. Now imagine the costs. So you've been sat on the sofa for an hour and a half. There's only a few minutes left of the film and your friend says to you, how much do I need to pay you to get up off the sofa now and walk over to where the remote control is and then just walk back again. And you think, well, I've been sat here for an hour and a half. I'm really comfy. I've got everything I need. I really just want to enjoy the last few minutes of the film. So whereas before I was willing to do this if you pay me a pound, now I say I'm not willing to do it for that price. Instead, it'd have to go to two, three, four, five pounds. So imagine it's five pounds that they'd now have to pay you to get up off the sofa in the last couple of minutes of the film to walk over to the other side of the room and come back again. So in that case, when there's only a few minutes left of the film, the benefit of turning up the volume is only 30p. The cost has gone up to five pounds. So therefore the benefit is now smaller than the cost. So we shouldn't do it. So what's this example trying to say? Well, just put simply, if we've got the entire film to watch, we've got some really large benefits and we're not that comfy yet, so the costs are quite low of getting up. If there's only a couple of minutes left of the film, the benefits are really small, but the costs are really high because we're really, really comfy because we've been sat there for an hour and a half. So this helps us to explain then why we're much more likely to get up off the sofa and fiddle around with the remote control and the volume when there's only a few minutes into the film rather than when there's only a few minutes left. So we're behaving in a way as if we're making these calculations in our heads, even though we don't perform them explicitly. So far, what we've looked at with the cost benefit analysis model is how we can use this framework to explain and predict the decisions that we make in terms of buying a product or doing any activity whatsoever. But most of the time, we're not just talking about whether we should go and buy a product. Normally, when you're going around the supermarket, you're deciding how many bars of chocolate to buy or how many bottles of Coke should you buy rather than just should you buy one or should you not? Or similarly, if you're going for a walk, you don't just have to decide, should I go for a walk? But instead, how long should I go for a walk? So in order to understand these decisions, we need to extend our cost benefit model. And that's what we'll come on to in our next lecture highlight.